Listen for these key words in this episode of Adventures in Murfreesboro, Equinox, and Arboretum. Adventures in Murfreesboro is produced in cooperation with Murfreesboro City Schools. My goodness, I can hear you from inside. What is going on? Oh, John, haven't you heard? The Equinox is coming. Oh. The Equinox is coming? Who told you that? A, a weather reporter. A weather reporter told you the Equinox is coming? Uh-huh. I don't understand. Maybe you should start from the beginning. Well, uh, we, we had this project at school, and it was learning all about the changing seasons and the days getting shorter, so I sent an email to a weather reporter and asked, why the days are getting shorter. Okay, so then what happened? Well, the weather reporter, he sent back a message. And what did it say? It said, the equinox is coming. Ah, oh, the equinox is coming. Is that it? Uh-huh, we have been warned. The equinox is coming. Do, do you think we should hide? We gotta find a place to hide. Where should we hide? Murph, we hide. Murph, Murph, calm down. Oh. Do you even know what the equinox is? Huh? Oh, yeah, 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 I do. It is a big, hairy, scary monster that is so big, every time he stands up, uh, his body covers the sun and that makes the day shorter. Uh-uh. Oh, oh, well, maybe then it's a giant half-bird, half-dinosaur creature that hides the sun with his monster wings and, and that makes the day shorter. Nope, not that either. Uh, a planet from another solar system? Oh, I know, shaped like a box. The Equinox Box? Uh-huh, yes! And the, the Equinox Box planet is coming right for us, and it, it's going to knock us out of the sky! Well, that would definitely make the day shorter, but I don't think so. Oh, well then, what is an Equinox? Murph, when you got a question, but you have no answer yet, who are you going to call? Um, who are you going to call? My mom? No, Murph, try again. Uh, when you got a question, but you have no answer yet, who are you going to call? Right, so... <laughs> Google it! Oh, Google it! Have you got a minute? Ah, uh, bonjour. Oui, but of course I have a minute, mes amis. Bonjour, Google it. How are you today? Oh, Jean, I am, how you say, très bien. Very good. That's good. Murph has a question for you. Oh, la, my little long-eared friend, what is your question? Well, Google it, what is an equinox? John says it's not a monster. Ah, uh, of course he's not a monster. Voila! Look at this, and listen to my friend explain it all. Murph, you and your friends are smart to notice that there's more daylight in the summer than in the winter. On the 4th of July, we always have to wait until 9 at night before the sky is dark enough to have a fireworks show. But on Christmas Day, it gets dark at 5.30. This is because the Earth is slightly tilted. In the summer, we're tilted towards the sun, so the days are longer. In the winter, we're tilted away from the sun, so the days are shorter. The equinox happens when both the daytime and nighttime are exactly 12 hours long. This only happens twice a year, in March and in September. In March, it is the first day of spring. In September, it is the first day of autumn. After our autumnal equinox, the days will become shorter than the nights. The nights will get longer and longer until around December 21st, almost Christmas. After that, 
the nights get shorter and the days start to get longer again. So the equinox is that special day that comes only two times a year when the sun is directly over the equator and the daytime hours are exactly the same as night. This September, enjoy the autumnal equinox and go outside and play some flashlight tag. So the equinox is when the sun is directly over the equator. That's right. right. And in autumn, the days start getting shorter because after the equinox, we get less direct sun each day. You got it, Murph. Ah, uh, my work here is done. Au revoir, my friends. Oh, bye. Goodbye, bye, bye, and thank Au revoir. you. Well, that was interesting. Of course, monsters would have been way cooler. Well, sure. But, you know, science is pretty cool, too. Yeah. In fact, I've got something to show you, Murph. Have you got a flashlight? Yeah, uh, right down there. Okay, great. I just remembered something I saw once. What? In the summertime, we get a lot of direct sunlight, so the days are long and bright. Kind of like when I shine this flashlight on this table here. See how bright it looks, Murph? I do. Well, now let's turn the flashlight at an angle, and you see the light is not so bright now. That's cool. Do it again. See? Summer, fall. Summer, fall. Summer, fall. And the days get shorter in the fall. You know, with, with the equinox and the seasons changing, September has a lot going on. That's right. There's Labor Day. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, and Grandparents Day. You know, I like to fix special things for my granny. Oh, that's really nice, Murph. And you know, the Discovery Center is having a Hispanic Heritage Day on September 15th, and it's free. Whoa, and you know what else is going on at the Discovery Center? What, Murph? Clifford the Big Red Dog exhibit is coming, and, and they're even going to have a breakfast with Clifford. Wow, Murph. I hope you get to go to that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, and then, and then there's the autumn equinox that we talked about on September 23rd. And last but certainly not least, on the 26th is National Johnny Appleseed Day. Ho, <laughs> I love celebrating Johnny Appleseed Day. You know, apples are one of my favorite foods. That doesn't surprise me, Murph. Yeah, you know, he sure planted a lot of trees. He sure did. And you know what? There's what? a place right here in town that has a lot of special trees. Really? Where? At Oakland's Mansion. They have an arboretum. An arboretum? What's that? Well, it's not another monster, Murph. <laughs> okay, okay. You are not going to let me forget about my Equinox monster, oh, are you? Oh, no. Never, Murph. I'll tell you what. Why don't we go check it out? Hey, can they come too? Sure, you come too. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody, I am here with my friend Connor Moss. Hi, Connor. Hey, Murph. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. And we are at Oakland Park, which is really part of the original grounds of Oakland Mansion. Is that right? That is correct, Murph. Oh, and it is so cool out here. And we came out here to learn about trees. Yes, we have a lot of trees here. And these trees are what make up our arboretum. Have you ever heard that word, Murph? Uh, yeah. yeah I, I heard it yet. And, and John tells me it is not a monster. An arboretum is not a kind of monster. It is not, thank goodness. Is it a lizard? No, thank goodness. No. Oh, okay, okay. So what exactly is an arboretum? An arboretum uh -huh. is uh, a place where you, we have a variety of trees that uh -huh. live in Tennessee. Right, right, right. And they're labeled with their scientific names. Scientific names? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Their common names. Common names, uh -huh. I don't speak Latin so well, so that is good that they have the common oh, name. Oh, yeah, me too, me too. You too, John? <laughs> right, me too. Okay. And they also have a description of what the Native Americans might have used the tree for. Ooh, yeah. Whoa! Yes. Dude, that's awesome. I can't wait to see that. And they have a description of maybe what the Civil War soldiers would have used those trees for. Wow! Oh my goodness, what kind of, what are some of the things that they use the trees for? Well, we have a tree here called a Kentucky coffee tree that uh -huh. the Civil War soldiers would use instead of coffee beans to make coffee when they're camped. Because they couldn't get the coffee? That's exactly right, but they did have the Kentucky coffee tree here. Kentucky coffee tree, I wonder what it tasted like. I'm not sure, I have not tried it. Okay, and what about our Native American friends? They used it for, they used a lot of these trees for uh, rope. Rope? Um, for cooking. Cooking. For medicine. Wait, 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 wait. They, didn't, they didn't cook rabbits, did they? I won't speak on that one right oh, now, Oh, dear, 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 dear. <laughs> well, time goes by and we're modern day people That's now. That's right. Right, right, right. right, right. Exactly. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, but the natives used it for a lot of different things because they couldn't go to the store uh -huh. uh, and buy rope or buy bowls or anything like that. So they used the trees to make them uh, all around Tennessee. And that's why 
uh, it's important to make note of which trees are useful for what type of things. So, you know, I also heard that they, they actually make some medicines from trees. Yes, they do. Uh, the willow tree you might be familiar with. Right, right, right. The bark of a willow tree is used to make the early form of aspirin. Whoa! Yeah. That is so cool! Isn't it? Yeah, what did you got there in your hand? Oh, and these are called pawpaws. Pawpaws? Yeah, and they are used like a, a little mango or a banana. You mean it's fruit? It's fruit, yes. And, and people eat that? Yes, they do. Whoa! And, yes, and also the animals eat it. The squirrels and the possums and the raccoons will climb up in the tree and eat these as well. Well, that's, that's kind of a multi-use, isn't it? Yes, it is. And people make jam and jelly from them. You can make pawpaw pies from pa -pa -pa -pa. them. <laughs> I like that name, pawpaw -pa pies. Yeah. Have you ever tasted one, Mr. Connor? I have, and they're very delicious. Whoa, what are they, what are they like? It tastes kind of like a mango. A mango. Mm -hmm. Kind of a hillbilly mango? A hillbilly mango is exactly right, yeah, yes. Yeah, <laughs> I kind of like that. I kind of like that. That's yeah. so cool. You know, Mr. Connor, I did not realize that trees could be so interesting. Yes, they are very interesting. And Oakland's Park is full of a variety of interesting trees, specifically this one behind us. Oh, oh my goodness, that is a big old tree. Yes, it's about 120 feet tall. Whoa. And it's almost 300 years old. 300 years old? Let's see, what was happening in our country 300 years ago? We weren't even a country then. Whoa! Mm -hmm. You mean no Revolutionary War? Nothing had happened yet. Oh my goodness! Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, that was a long time ago. No paved roads! Nope. No big shopping stores? Nope. Oh, no, no, no fancy restaurants? None. Oh my goodness, what are we gonna, and no internet! Worst of all, no adventures in Murfreesboro. Oh, <laughs> a dreadful time indeed. Oh, yes. my, no video games. Oh, mm -hmm. oh my goodness. Well, this is a nice old tree, though. Huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. How old was it during the Civil War? This tree was already 150 years old during the Civil War. So it was a big tree giving shade even then. Yes, it was. And back there behind is where some of the soldiers camped. Yes, and they would have been able to see this tree, but it would have been about half as big. Half as big. Mm -hmm. Whoa, instead of 120 feet, it would have been about 80. Sure. Oh, see, I'm good at math. Yes, you are, Murph. Yeah, <laughs> math. math my thing. Yeah. Okay, okay, and so what, what is that big old bump on that tree? That big bump on the tree is yeah. a buildup of bacteria uh -huh. over many, many years. Whoa. So it doesn't hurt the tree. Uh -huh. It looks a little strange. It does. But it would be a worse idea to cut it off. Oh. Uh, inviting more bacteria. Oh, okay, because it kind of is protected that way. Yeah, and up in some of the upper layers of the uh -huh. tree, we have different animals that live there, maybe some squirrels. Squirrels, yeah. Um, a variety of bugs and birds. Bugs and birds, And yeah. also some bats uh, live up in the upper parts of the tree, yeah. You know what bats are good for? They eat mosquitoes. Oh, that's right. Yes. Uh, I, I love bats because they eat those mosquitoes. Yes, they're very helpful. They'll eat their body weight mosquitoes every night. Whoa, dude, that yeah. is one hungry bat. Yes, you thank know, goodness. I've heard of fruit bats. Are they fruit bats or some other kind of bats? They're, um, I don't know what kind of bats they are. Fruit bats don't live here in Tennessee, um, but they do live in a place like India and somewhere down south of here. Speaking of fruit, do, do you have fruit trees here? I we mean, besides do. the pawpaw, of course. Yeah, yes, we have apple trees. Ooh. Um, uh, several heirloom apples. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Well, did you know that September, in September, we celebrate National Johnny Appleseed Day? I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, he, he spread apple trees all across the country. Very interesting. Very cool. So mm -hmm. tell me about your heirloom apples. Do they look like our apples today? They don't look like our apples. If you go to the supermarket <laughs> and buy an apple, they're very shiny and very right, red. Right. The ones that grow here on an old-fashioned apple tree are a little bit smaller and not quite as shiny. Not quite as shiny. Mm -hmm. mm, I wonder how they taste. I bet they're still good. I huh? bet they're still delicious. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Uh -huh. Oh, you're making a little joke there. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, it's been so good talking to you. Let me know, what is your favorite thing about working here at Oakland's? Uh, I enjoy being able to be in nature. In nature. Mm -hmm. And surrounded by history. Right? Oh, it is. Mm -hmm. It's so cool. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mr. Connor, can I ask some questions about you? Of course you can. Where are you from? I am from Nashville, uh, but grew up in Franklin. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And I've lived in Murfreesboro for about 12 or 13 years now. Oh, and, and is this your new home? This is my new home, yes. Oh, and where did you go to school? Uh, I went to MTSU. And studied oh, Blue Raider fan! That's right. Oh, good. Do you bleed blue? I sure do. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. And how did you get interested in working here? 
Well, I stumbled across Oakland's mansion on accident and fell in love with it immediately and have never left. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. What exactly do you do here? You're a, I heard through the grapevine that you are a master gardener. That is true. You know, rabbits really like master gardeners. I think they like the garden more. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> do, you, do you ever grow carrots? Uh, I have not grown carrots yet, but I will be sure to grow some next summer for you. Oh, oh, oh that's awesome. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, okay. How do you become a master gardener? Uh, there's a 15-week course okay. taught at the Ag Center over on John Rice. Right. Um, and it's open to the public, um, and it is incredibly informative. Uh, and at the end of it, you take a test, and right. uh, you'll be certified. Whoa! Mm -hmm. So that's another thing that we have mm -hmm. going on right here in the borough. That's exactly right, Murph. It's a great place to live, isn't it? It sure is. Well, Oakland's always have special things for kids. Is there anything coming up, Mr. Connor? Yes, there is, as a matter of fact. We have our annual field day. Field day? Called Autumn in the Oaks. Autumn in the Oaks. Oh, I like that name. Yes, and that's September the 20th. September the 20th. Yes. Ooh, right around the corner. It's very close, and we'll have uh, many, many school children doing a variety of activities out here. And will they learn about some of the trees? Most definitely. They will oh. learn about trees and herbs and flowers. Wow, that sounds mm -hmm. like so much fun. Are there, are there hands-on activities? Oh, yes. More than I can count. Oh, this sounds good. Thanks so much for talking to us today, Mr. Connor. You're so welcome, Murph. It's always a pleasure. Take care. Bye now. See ya. Wow, Murph, that was pretty awesome. Yeah, but all this talk about trees has made me hungry. Why? You don't eat trees. Well, they grow, and, and I eat things that grow. Oh, you mean like apples? Yeah. Apples are great. I think we should make a snack with apples. Oh, oh, great idea, great idea. And, and I know one that's pretty easy. What's it called? It's called apple pizza. Ooh, that sounds really good. What ingredients do we need? Uh, apples? <laughs> no, we need apples, and we need a cutting board, and we need an adult. Too bad we don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then we need a knife for the adult to use, and then we need toppings. Are you ready to get started? Let's get started, Let's Mark. Let's get the stuff from Granny's kitchen. All right, sounds good. Here goes. Okay. Oh, this looks so bright and festive. Uh, are you hungry? I'm hungry, Murph. What we, do we do first? First, we've got our apple. That's right. And I've already cored it. So what are we going to do next, Murph? You cut a big hole in it like a giant apple donut, right? Like a giant apple donut. Right. And now you cut a slice. You cut it in slices crosswise. Okay. There you go. Oh, look at all that apple juiciness coming out. Right, right. Now yep. cut some more slices. Cut slices. There you go. How many slices do we cut, Murph? Oh, just as many as we want. Even though we're using a table knife for this part, you always want to have an adult with you helping you with the cutting. Okay, Murph, I've got all the apple slices cut. What do we do next? Now we grab our peanut butter, or if any of your friends are allergic, some sun butter will work too. Okay, and we're gonna spread this on top of it? Right, grab a slice and spread the peanut butter all over the yummy apple. All right. Oh, oh, I can hear my stomach growling. I bet you can, Murph. Oh, listen to that, listen to that. Oh, the yummy for Murph's tummy. Ooh, that looks good. All right, Murph, we're all set on that. Now we can add whatever toppings we want. I brought some raisins out. Oh, okay, Murph, that'd be great. Yeah. I'll get some of these raisins on here, so you just put them on. Well, you're not supposed to do it in a clump, dude. Well, they kind of clump together sometimes. <laughs> we'll separate them out. Yeah. There you go. Okay. And now you can you can add nuts or, or rice krispies or, or chocolate chips. <laughs> or, and now we can take and drizzle some chocolate across our apple pizza. Let's do some chocolate, Murph. Oh, just a little. Just a little, dude. There you go. Okay. Okay. Taste it. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. What do All you right, think Murph. of my apple pizza? Let me taste it. Mmm, that's some good apple pizza, Murph. Yeah! Oh, it's yummy for our tummy. Healthy and fun and quick and easy, right? This is great, Murph, and so easy to make. Oh, I love summer. I love the food and the breeze and, and the fireflies at night and all the cool, yummy things we can do and eat. And speaking of fireflies, Murph, uh -huh. you know what that reminds me of? What? Remember when we went to Seagull Park this summer and saw the hot air balloons? <gasps> oh, yes, I absolutely do. And they were just at dusk like when fireflies come out. You're right, Murph, they were. Let's show the kids at home. Yeah, yeah, they kind of glowed like fireflies. That's awesome. Y'all check this out. Check it out. Oh, hi, everybody. I am so excited because I am here with my brand new friend, Mr. Logan Bedford. Hi, Logan. 
Hi, Murph. How you doing? Good, doing good. Good, 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 good. Oh, I'm so excited. There's a lot going on here today, right? Oh, yeah. Yep, Hot Air Balloon Festival. Hot Air Balloon Festival. So, tell me about these balloons. Do you fly a balloon? Yes, we do. We fly uh, fly hot air balloons. We take passengers up in, in Franklin, Tennessee, so do it every day. So where are you from, Logan? Grew up in Franklin. Franklin? And I hear that you have a Murfreesboro connection, is that right? Yes, I do. I uh, went to MTSU. Uh, yeah? Graduated in 2008. Whoa, that's a great year, 2008. So you're a big Blue Raider fan, I bet. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So how did you learn to fly balloons? I learned to fly Murph when I was uh, about 16 years old. Grew okay. up flying with my dad. Uh -huh. He flew balloons since 1971. Whoa! So uh, grew up flying with him and just kept doing it ever since. So, so Logan, tell us, uh, why is there so much noise right here? Well, we got a big gas-powered fan that's inflating this balloon behind us. So that fan is pumping air in and that's what's keeping it inflated right now. Keeping it inflated. So what do you like about about flying these big old balloons? Well, I like the fact that it's still kind of mysterious to most people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when we go out and fly, we get big crowds of people. Kids are always uh, in awe of the big balloons flying over right, and I landing near them. So uh, that's what keeps it exciting and fun. Well, how come my birthday party balloons don't fly, but these big balloons will fly? Well, these are uh, hot air balloons, so we put hot air inside the balloons. We <laughs> use big burners, and, and that heats the air and makes them lift the balloons up. <laughs> but they're so large, one of the average balloons, you can actually fit about 90,000 basketballs inside the balloon. So 90,000 basketballs! Yep, yep. Oh, that's a lot of basketballs! Oh, yeah. What? So just hot air is what makes these things get big. Yep, the hot air expands and it wants to rise and eventually we heat it up enough. When we usually fly, uh, we've got the balloons at about 200 degrees in the top of the balloon. Whoa, now that so, is hot. Yep. So there's no special gas that goes inside. No, oh. it's uh, just hot air. Just yep. hot air. Yep. And, and so how high up can the balloons go? Uh, the balloons can go as high as 15,000 feet on an average flight, and the record Whoa. is 68,000 with a modified balloon. Whoa! Balloon. Did they yeah. ever run into birds? No. Nope. 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 The big birds know <laughs> to stay away from the yep. balloons. We are slow moving, and the birds stay away from us. Oh, Mr. Logan, how do you steer one of those big old balloons? Well, a lot of people don't realize there's actually a lot of different winds at different altitudes. Uh -huh. So we'll go up and down to catch uh -huh. different wind currents, uh -huh. and that's how we'll steer. How do you know what the wind currents are? Uh, that's the art of ballooning. The art of ballooning is like a secret, the mystery yes. that we're talking about. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, balloons come from a long time ago. I looked it up. Yep, that's right. 1783. 1783. <laughs> hey, John, were you walking the earth back then? Not hardly. No, no. Thanks so much for talking. To tell us what we're going to see now. Well, now we're going to inflate the balloons. We've got five balloons out here. We're going to inflate all of them. Uh, <laughs> Once it gets a little darker, we'll start lighting the balloons up with some music playing. Whoa. Uh, the spectators will come up, you know, get into the baskets, see oh the, the pilots, and see the balloons up close. Oh, so. oh, oh, can I get in? Can I get <laughs> in? Oh, yeah. Basket? Yeah, if you would come hang out with us and uh, we'll let you uh, maybe pull on the burner. There's nothing better than a bunny in a balloon. Oh, hey, this is my kind of guy. Oh, I can't wait to see. Thanks so much for talking to us today, Mr. Logan. Thank you, Murph. Take care. Bye now. <laughs> bye bye. You ready, Murph? <laughs> sure have, Murph, and we learned about hot air balloons and how they rise up in the air and how they steer. We learned all kinds of things about them. Yeah, yeah, and you know, as much as I love summer, I am so excited to be back in school. It's so exciting. You know, when we had Murph's Fun Run, we were able to collect a lot of supplies for the kids and classrooms right here in Murfreesboro City. We sure were, Murph. Special thanks to all the kids that brought us supplies. Right, 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 right. And, and to Logan and, and Connor for being guests on our show. That's right. Thanks, guys. Y'all were awesome. Why don't we show them some of the fun run? Let's show them, Murph. Hey, take it away. Roll them. You ready to run? Yeah! Okay, we got to get in shape. Everybody stretch up. Up, 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 and now down. Down, down, down. Y'all can go lower than that.
Hey, hey guys!